Now we are talking about perimeter, circumference, and area, and these will hopefully be gentle reminders. Um, but again, I would take notes on this, maybe pause the video so you have enough time to write these down. But just a few reminders about perimeter. Remember, perimeter means the distance around a polygon. Same thing, circumference is also perimeter. It's just specifically perimeter of a circle. And then we have area is the amount of space inside of a shape. Okay, so for a square, we have our perimeter is 4S, and S is just the side length. Okay, so if this was 10, then the perimeter would be 40. And then the area is side squared, side times side, so that would be 10 times 10, that would be 100. And then rectangle, remember rectangles, they don't have all the same sides, so we have a length and a width. So our perimeter would be two of those lengths and two of the widths added together. All right, and then our area is length times width. Triangle, remember all you're doing for perimeters is just adding up all the three sides. That's why they say A plus B plus C. But then for area, we're always doing one half base times height. And we've talked about how the base has to be perpendicular to the height. Keep in mind that the base does not have to be on the bottom of the triangle. I could have a triangle look like this, and this would be the base, and this horizontal one would be the height. So just keep that in mind. Don't uh, always think base has to be on the bottom. And then for your circle, your circumference, or in other, word, in other words, perimeter, is 2 pi r. Remember, r is your radius. And then the area is pi r squared. Keep in mind that radius is always half of the diameter. So if the diameter goes all the way across the circle, then radius is always half of that. Because sometimes they won't give you the radius. Sometimes they'll give you the diameter. All right, so pause the video. See if you can do these uh, without looking at how I do them. And then uh, we'll go from there. So here are the answers, and I wanted to talk about a few things. Make sure you are using your units. So for perimeter, you're, in the first one, you're using millimeters, but area would be millimeters squared. Okay. Also, in number two, the triangle, make sure you're using 20 and 15 as the height and the base. And then even though the directions say use 3.14 as an approximation for pi, we will never use 3.14. There's actually a pi button on your calculator. And if you need help finding that, um, please ask about that in class. But we will always use pi. And actually, I prefer answers that look like this. So 22 pi or 121 pi. That way, you don't even have to get a calculator out if you don't want to. Sometimes you need to in order to figure out the reasonableness of an answer in a word problem. But those are my comments for perimeter and area. So then let's look at one like this. This is more along the lines of our geometry. So we're linking the coordinate geometry with area. So first we would graph this triangle, 1, 4. That's J, 9, 4. And then 4, 0. Okay, so this is J. K and L. So very important in geometry. Draw your diagram so you know what it looks like. Then it says find the perimeter and the area. So let's talk area first. Area, we're going to do one half base times height. And this is an example of where I would want my base to be this side right here because the height would be perpendicular. So that's going to be the easiest to find because I can just count. So JK is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right, so base is 8, and then our height is 1, 2, 3, 4. So for the area, for this triangle, it would be 1 half 8 times 4. So that would be 16. And then here, since they didn't give us units, you don't need to worry about your units. You could put units squared, but not necessary on this type of problem. Now for perimeter, we know that JK is 8, but we would need to know LK and then JL. So you can either use distance formula 
or Pythagorean theorem. I'm probably going to use Pythagorean theorem since I've already graphed it. All right, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is 1, 2, 3, 4. Careful, this is not a 3, 4, 5 triangle because the 5 is not the... Oh, no. Yeah, the 5 is not the hypotenuse. So I would do 4 squared plus 5 squared equals my LK squared. So 16 plus 25. And that would be 41. And that's what KL is squared. So make sure to square root that. So that would be the square root of 41. So that's LK. And then for JL, let's see, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. And then this one is 1, 2, 3. All right. 1, 2, 3. Yep. So now that's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So I know that JL is 5. Okay. Or you could do Pythagorean theorem or distance formula. All right. So my perimeter is going to be. 8 plus 5 plus square root of 41. So that's going to be 13 plus the square root of 41. I'm totally okay with you leaving that. Um, let's see, if we had to do a decimal version, then we could approximate that square root of 41, which is approximately 6.403. And then we can add that 13. So that would be 19.403 approximately for our perimeter. I prefer the exact answer, though. All right, so let's look at some other problems that you might come across. You need to buy mulch for a rectangular flower garden. The garden is 6 feet wide and 12 feet long. So I would draw a rectangular flower garden that's 6 feet long, wide, and 12 feet long. One bag of mulch can cover eight square feet. One bag is equal to eight square feet. All right, how many bags of mulch should you buy? All right, so basically we just need to find the area, right? So this is six times 12, which will be 72 square feet. And then we know that eight square feet is is one bag, so let's do 72 square feet divided by 8 square feet. And yeah, they won't always come out this nice, nicely, but that will be 9, so we know we need exactly 9 bags. Okay. And that, of course, depends on how deep you want to make your mulch as well. This problem simplified that a little bit. All right, so here we have the base of the triangle is 24 feet and its area is 216. They want us to find the height. Keep in mind that all you're doing is working backwards. They give you the area now and the base. We're trying to find the height. So don't let that fool you. You don't have to do anything crazy. You're just solving an equation. But now you're solving it for a different variable. So 216 divided by 12, that gets us 18. So our height is 18 feet. All right, so in class, we will do a lot more complex problems. You're probably thinking this is way too easy, Miss McKinnon. But don't worry, we'll make it harder and more fun. <laughs> See you in class.